Good afternoon, everyone. This video is brought to you by our friends at trueleafmarket.com. Heirloom and organic seeds for any grow zone on our planet. You'll find that link in the description box, as well as links to all the other stories that I'm talking about and referencing in this video. History repeats. Severe floods occur cyclically. Australasian Journal of Water Resources, Anthony Kim and Greg McMullen, Look at all the variables they put in, not just CO2. Also cyclical, David Taylor talking about Australia going to its coldest winter on record. Wait a second, he's using sunspot changes in his forecasts as well. If it comes true, wheat production in Australia will be lost along with South Africa's. Looks cyclical to me. Lesotho, snow. And you might ask, where's that? at the edge of KwaZulu-Natal, South Africa. And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to Adapt2030 and click that bell to get the latest updates. And you've been told CO2 is responsible for all the weather changes that we're seeing on our Earth. Oops! Severe flooding events occur cyclically this comes out in a peer-reviewed Australasian Journal of Water Resources. Associate Professor Anthony Keim and Greg McMullen focusing on the events in southeast Queensland. Area that they've been studying, they find a 40-year flood cycle. And you know I've gone further back in time, back to the 1200s, and you'll find a correlation with the droughts in the anchor area of Cambodia and the floods in the exact same areas here in the Grand Solar Minimums. What's most interesting is these professors here started to use all of these variables to make their predictions. Now look how many are interwoven And I think it's a great job that they're doing trying to bring all of these different disciplines in and synthesize this into a forecast. The only thing I personally, it's my own personal opinion, I think they need to add sunspots inside here as well. But look at this. They're going as far out as interdecadal Pacific Oscillation, El Nino Southern Oscillations, talking about Southern Monsoons, East Coast Lows, got Trade Winds, which is a, a yearly cycle. Blocking patterns, you know, that's exactly what they're talking about over the North Pole that's sending cold air down to Europe and that's recombining now to send cold temperatures through April in Arctic. That's going to be great. But anyway, they talk about the Southern Annular Mode and Indian Dipole. This is science moving forward right here. This is it. This is what needs to be used to now combine with the solar forecast in the Grand Solar Minimum. And this will be the new science of our planet moving forward. Do you see any cycles in here? Notice the wave, the wave. That's 2,000 years. Do you see any cycle in there? Also, this article here that came out last week, the map every Australian should see, country set to shiver through the coldest winter ever recorded. According to David Taylor, he's been on the money so far with forecasts that people cannot understand how he comes to his conclusions. And you know what? He uses sunspot activity as well. So imagine if this small crew of forecasters were to get together and combine their knowledge, what they could come up with. It's not CO2. It's not you, it's the sun and repeating cycles. A grand solar minimum is a repeating cycle. So if his forecasts do come true, Southern Hemisphere is going to break all of these cold records. And the list goes on and on through the cities as well. I just grabbed the top, what I could get on the screen capture here. But the lowest July temperatures, and it's not just July, it'll be through the winter of this year at some point. And when you start to see this, I'm just going to refer you to the map and please notice which areas are going to go offline, which areas are going to be late season planting. 
That yellow is the premium wheat. And if we come down here in New South Wales and South Australia area, Mali for the last couple of years has had an incredibly difficult time. That is smack in the center of that yellow, right where the border of the two states is at. It's already starting, so it's easy to see a cycle if you're looking for it. So those past two years in Mali, for me, as an analyst, I would be pinpointing that area to have a third difficult growing time with losses this year as well. And again, I want to take you back to this Greenland temperature reconstruction based on ice cores that the IPCC loves to talk about. How is the temperature able to drop 2 degrees Celsius and then rise 2 degrees Celsius when there were no factories, cars, or CO2 emissions, anything close to what we have today? So they conveniently never like to look back this far in time. This is just a thousand years of time. That previous chart I showed you was 2,000 years. And you saw those undulations up and down, up and down, up and down. Temperature varies naturally. So I'd like you to look in the chart here and then really take a look at how the temperature drops 2 degrees Celsius, then it rises 2 degrees Celsius, down 1C, up 1C, up 2C, down 2C, up 1C. How is this possible without us forcing the climate? Also, Bobby, an Australian politics forum, otherwise known as OzPolitik, New Ice Age board, he put out a questionnaire. What do you believe regarding our climate? Global warming, only 52% of the people said that's it because people have obviously shifted in what they're thinking about drivers on the climate. Just barely over half the people. Look at that. Even a full quarter said it's normal climate variation. Interesting, huh? I know the sampling is small, but still, this is a reflection of what's going on in society. Let's jump down to Southern Africa, Lesotho, Teleng Pass, ice and snow already blanketing the roads. Another view for you here. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Lesotho, it's its own independent nation within South Africa that's surrounded by South African land, free state. KwaZulu Natal, Eastern Cape. What's interesting though, what I have, the forecast map here is March 16th and 17th, it snowed as well, several centimeters. And then again, snow just a few days ago. And when we're looking for repeating patterns here, I'll leave you with the history of snow in Southern Africa. This is amazing. I looked at it last year, also looking for different cycles and patterns within there. It's from 1850 up until now. So I'll let you dig in there, do some of your own research and see what you come out with. Now the Southern Hemisphere is going into its winter and as predicted with the Grand Solar Minimum, there are going to be some intense snow and cold that is going to follow on the heels of what is happening in the Northern Hemisphere. And also, those of you who are looking for interesting information on vibrational technologies and things from our ancient past that seem to not be what the timeline has been given to us as a human species for civilization, technology, etc. I'll refer you over here to Michael Tellinger. Same area down there, South Africa. He goes into Zimbabwe frequently. He talks about cone tools, vibrational frequencies, Adam's calendar, and the gamut of what has been not widely talked about in South Africa and the southern part of Africa. 200,000 year old levitation technology. And when you go in here, I'll see you in a couple months after you come back out. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Southern Hemisphere on tap for an incredibly cold winter.